Hey, namaste everybody. Lisa Romana here, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and today it's Father's Day. You will see this video on some other day, I'm sure, if you're not going to be able to catch it live. But I wanted to do a video about Father's Day because, first of all, I did a live stream on Mother's Day to reaching out to abused adult children who were feeling conflicted about how to feel about it being Mother's Day. When you are the adult child of an alcoholic or a narcissist and days like Mother's Day and Father's Day show up, it can be very, very confusing. I'm just trying to shut my phone off so we don't get interrupted. Um, you know, when you're the adult child from a dysfunctional home and it's Mother's Day and you know, you're, you're at the store and you can't escape the Mother's Day balloons and Mother's Day flowers. Hi, Melissa. Um, Father's Day balloons, Father's Day cards and all that stuff. You know, you could be re-triggered and re-wounded all over again, right? And so it's really, really, I think it's really, really important that that we come together and we share and we relate to one another. So because what happens is when you grow up in a dysfunctional home, you know, the wounds are so deep and you're in such a state of survival and you grow up as a child thinking that everything is your fault, right? Um, you know, you grow up thinking that, the disconnect that you experience with your mom and your dad is your fault and it's not your fault. And that induces shame. Um, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, please check me out on Instagram. I actually posted a poll yesterday or the day before, and it's really working out well. And, and, and um, I asked some pretty deep questions and you'll get to see, um, you know, you get to see how other people have answered. Um, and you will realize that you're not alone. You know, it's very, very important. I'm just trying to clean my glasses because I have to read this letter. Um, <clears throat> you know, we, I think those of us, I've, I've had clinical depression. I believe my brother is suffering from clinical depression right now. I'm actually very nervous for him. Um, and um, I think those of us who suffer from anxiety and depression and codependency, very oftentimes we feel boxed in and we feel so alone. And that thinking, you have to remember how the law of attraction works and how the brain works because it all blends together. Like thoughts attract like thoughts. The subconscious mind never says, I don't want to listen to that. It never says, Pshh. it never does that. The subconscious mind says, okay, okay, life sucks. Okay. Your father hates you. Okay. You're no good. Okay. You're not good enough. Okay. You're fat. Okay. You're ugly. And then what has to happen, what happens in the brain um, so the way the brain's designed is then the brain will do everything it can to reinforce what you believe or to reinforce what you've been downloaded. So, hey, Anton, hey, my, Michaela, I'm so glad you're here. Michael Moore, um, namaste. So thank you so much for being here, all of you, this Father's Day, really, really important to me um, because I think it's important that those of us who struggle with, you know, coming from dysfunctional homes, especially on days like today, like Mother's Day and Father's Day, because it can mess with your head, right? You know, and then we're re-triggered. And it's so easy to fall back into the um, experience of the inner child. You know, it's very important that we recognize that we're always time traveling, meaning we're always in the past and we're always in the now and we're always creating our future. So it's really important that everybody understands, like, I, even though I'm 53, if I'm not careful, you know, my brain will be flooded with visceral information. My conscious mind will be hijacked through the physical sensations that occur after an emotion is, is um, recognized. And then a behavior will ensue, right? And so that's where Stephen Hawkins and I, we agree. You know, Stephen Hawkins and I agree that there's, I agree with Stephen Hawkins, that there is no free will. Um, but he doesn't, he never believed it was free will ever. I disagree with that. I believe that we have free will once we're above the veil. Once we're above the veil and we understand what's happening in our bodies, that an emotion triggers a physical reaction. It always does because there is no such thing as separate, uh, uh, separation. After the physical reaction becomes a behavior. And so below the veil of consciousness, there'll be an emotion, there'll be a physical sensation, then there'll be behavior. And below the veil of consciousness, I am creating patterns in the subconscious mind. Patterns, 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 and neural connections in my brain. 
and neurons that fire together stick together, right? But the brain is amazing. And if you don't use a particular thought process, what will happen is the brain will actually come along and mark a neural bundle or a bunch of neural fibers with a protein marker because the brain's recognized, oh, we don't need that anymore. Literally, the brain has its own um, dust buster. It does. If you don't use a, if neurons that don't fire enough, you lose it. It's just like muscle tissue. Muscle tissue that you don't use will eventually, you know, atrophy. Um, protein bonds will start to come apart. The same thing happens in the brain. So a thought is like a dumbbell. Okay. A thought is like a dumbbell, meaning a thought that you think over and over and over and over and over is exercising particular frequencies, reinforcing particular frequencies, and reinforcing certain nerve bundle fibers in your brain. Okay. When you go to the gym and you do squats, and I got to do some more of those myself, but when you go to the gym and you're working out with dumbbells, you're doing bicep curls, right? Over and over and over and over and over, you are reinforcing the muscle fibers that are needed to lift this weight, right? If you don't do it, I used to work out every day and I haven't since I really started my online coaching programs and I'm at a desk most of my time, I'm coaching on the phone most of my time and I'm writing most of my time, um, you know, or reading or researching. So my whole life has changed. And so I can see that my body's changed. That's not my body's fault. That's just the way the body's designed. So what you decide to focus on is what you'll experience in your life. Now, below the veil of consciousness, it's not your fault. So if you're abused in childhood and you're taught that you're not good enough, right? Below the veil of consciousness, you're firing those neurons together. You're thinking those thoughts over and over, the subconscious minds at play. You don't even realize that you can think about the way you think. Right. So it's really, really important um, that we learn as human beings to stop giving into this idea that we are powerless. We're not. No matter what has happened to you, you can overcome. Don't believe the rhetoric. Don't believe the bullshit. Don't believe it. Um, you have to understand that your brain is divine and your being is divine and consciousness once you tap into consciousness, true enlightenment, there is absolutely nothing you cannot do. Nothing. Now, having said that, that's all fluff and stuff. And doesn't that sound nice this Sunday morning on Father's Day? Blah, 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 right? Lots of people get up on stage and they say, do this and do that. And once you do this, your life will be easy. But not many people tell you how to do that, how to get better. And that was very frustrating to me. Um, and that's why I got annoyed. I really did. Got an, I got annoyed that there was so much information, but not like, well, how do I do that? Okay. How do I, how do I forgive genius? You know, uh, you know, how do I use law of attraction to my advantage? How? Because thinking happy thoughts doesn't work. It doesn't work. If there is cognitive dissonance on a psychological level, and if there, are, there is neural wiring that is um, in conflict to the images that I'm that I'm trying to muster up in my head. The law of attraction will not work. It won't work. Now the law of attraction, I should, I should clear that up. The law of attraction always works. It never fails, right? I'm talking about in a deliberate attempt to use the law of attraction to your advantage, right? And so um, that's really, really important. And once you once you heal a lot of the stuff that's below the veil and below the surface, which is what my 12 week breakthrough coaching programs about I help people heal what's below the veil. And then once, once they understand what's below the veil, why and what went wrong and how to fix it, then, then I take, then I offer them an opportunity to do more with the law of attraction coaching program that I've created because it's so important that we understand that we are powerful human beings and that we are creators. And it's not our fault that what happened happened to us. Do not ever give into rhetoric and bullshit, okay? It's a lie, you know. Um, medication, I know people who are on medication, and I thank God that they, they are on medication because they need it while they're going through the recovery program. It just takes the edge off, right? Awesome. But I believe that we live in a society where 
we are fed medication and the medication may numb us and get us to dissociate like a joint. Like you could be full of anxiety, smoke a joint, and all of a sudden you're detached from your body, right? But guess what? When the buzz wears off, you're back into your body and your body's anxious again. So it doesn't work long term. So we have to come up with ways to um, help us and help ourselves. And I really think it's a grassroots effort because there's a lot of, you know, there's, there's um, I find that a lot of what is considered the best advice um, is not very encouraging. You know, take this medication. Um, you know, I've had clients tell me that their therapist and psychiatrist said that they were never going to get better, that this was the best they were going to have. They should just learn to live with anxiety, um, learn to live with the fact that your mother is who she is. And you're never going to have a relationship with her, which is true to a point. But it's kind of frustrating and very sad to me to think that so many of us are being taught to just suck it up. No, don't suck it up. Go for it. Go for the joy and go for the abundance. And let's talk about, I want to talk about the letter that I received. Um, okay. So I want to talk, someone just said, Raven said, that's what my therapist is telling me. You see, I, see, I don't, it's not true. It's, it's just not true. You're talking about somebody who I could speak with authority on this. I've been suicidal. I have suicidal ideation. Um, I have been clinically depressed. I have been severely codependent, love addicted, had eating disorders. I used to pull hair out of my head. I would, I was kind of OCD. I was counting uh, numbers in my head and I, I memorized license plates, compulsive cleaner, um, very reactive. What else? I'm trying to think of what else was wrong with me. Oh, eating disorders. I think I said that. Um, there's so many things wrong with me. So many things. But they were all symptoms. They were all symptoms. Human beings are, um, let me see. Oh, so Lynn just said, I wasn't just being told to suck it up. I was being given the message that my life isn't important. So this is, you have to know that your life is important. You're, you are significant. You're here. And if you're here, you're significant, right? If you weren't meant to be here, you wouldn't be here. You're here. So you matter. You are matter. You're made of matter. The earth is here, right? The earth matters. It's made of matter. You're here. You're organic. You're, you're as organic as they come. Um, so you matter. Now, I think it's important that you understand that your mind is always going to think a thought it always thought unless you change the thought. And that's just physics. Okay. I am somebody who blends physics, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, psychology, um, metaphysics, all into what I coach because you are a multidimensional human being. Okay. And when we go sit and we talk to a psychiatrist, we have to know that we are chemical, that we are psychological. Um, we are our past. Your personality um, is um, the result of things in your environment, right? Yes, biology. Yes, you know, chemistry of the brain. But our personalities are the id, the ego, super ego, ego, super critic, all of which have been molded by the environments we are born into, okay? Um, so we have to understand how the brain works. We have to understand that the amygdala is downloaded with certain information. And um, I'll be talking about this in my, at my live event this weekend in, in uh, Connecticut. Um, the brain is downloaded with certain information, a certain ruler. The brain automatically outside your conscious awareness, you do not have a choice. Your brain categorizes trauma and very high on the list is abandonment. Okay. When you feel emotionally abandoned, that is a threat to your survival. So you are not crazy if you're a love addict, if you're a sex addict, if you are addicted to drugs, if you have anxiety, if you are anorexic, are bulimic, blah, 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 blah. You're not crazy if you are experiencing those things and you suffered abandonment and attachment trauma as a child because your brain considers abandonment numero uno threat to your survival. Doesn't it make sense? If you come to this planet and you were rejected by your tribe, your brain's got to throw off all these alarms, right? Because you came here to connect. And so we are not crazy. And we better be careful because this social media shit and this, these dating apps and stuff, 
It all feeds into isolation and separation. It's an, it's an excuse for human contact, right? We have to learn how to connect with the self and then learn how to tr- figure out who we can trust in our experience so that we can learn to bond with other people because ultimately that's what human beings need. But we have to learn who, we have to learn to decipher the lions, the tigers, and bears from non-threatening people in our lives, right? Really, really important. And that's, that's your, um, that is your right. So know that you, you, there, you have to believe in hope. Know that your th- um, thoughts that fire together, stick together. Neural pathways that fire together, stick together. Know that one thought attracts another thought of the same vibration. Know that thoughts are subject to the laws of physics, just like a moving car. A moving car will stay in motion until acted upon by a force. That force could be the brakes, but it comes from the human being driving the car to slam on the brakes. The car will stop. Or another vehicle, right? So the force um, will stay in motion until acted upon by another force. So what is true in the physical world is true in the non-physical world. Hear me, dear ones. This is huge. This is freaking huge. Your thoughts, and this is where you can find your personal power, your thoughts are subject to the laws of physics. They are. Your thoughts will stay in motion until acted upon by a force. That force will be medication, right? Or it will be a drug. It will be an addictive process. It will be dissociation. But there's something better than all of that. That is your human potential. That is your ability to tap into the conscious field, the higher conscious field, with the brain cells that make up the neocortex and the prefrontal lobe. If you're thinking here from the amygdala, because you have an amygdala on both sides, they're like blinders on a horse. And you know what's on the inside of my hands when I do this? My childhood. All I can see is my childhood. All I can see in my childhood. But when I take my conscious mind, right, and I have hope, suddenly what can happen is I can get to a higher state of awareness, right, and I can begin to imagine a different future for me. And we have to do that. The first, first we have to have hope. Then we have to have a process, you know, because you need a process when your thoughts are taking you down. So, but if you just knew, if you just take away from this video today, this idea that, uh, a thought will stay in motion until acted upon by another, another, another thought. You have to know that you are that you, your higher self, has the ability to think that new thought, right? So if you don't think a new thought, don't be mad at your brain because it's a moving car, because your thoughts are just going to be what they've always been. And if you didn't put your thoughts in your head, somebody else did, right? I remember the day I was I was coming out of the gym one day. Um, I ran into my car and I looked into the mirror and I said to myself, oh, my God, you look horrible. You look so old. Look at the circles under your eyes. Oh, my God, Lisa. And I caught the thoughts. And it was just then it went to the cellulite on my thighs and that you have spider veins. I was like I had an observable moment where I watched my mind. One thought attract another thought, then another thought, then another thought, then another thought. And they were all in the same frequency. And I had this epiphany like, oh, my God, it's the law of attraction. This is just neurology. This is physics. Like, oh, my God. And so what I began to do was keep a marble notebook of all the negative talk that I had that I was speaking to myself. And and later on, you know, as I, and I, I filled a notebook up in a very short amount of time. And what I realized in reflection was these were all the things that I had heard other people say, either about other people or to myself. My mother made fun of my thighs. You know, she made mention of my spider veins. She made mention of cellulite. Um, My father would say, oh, you look tired. You should go put some makeup on. Look at the circles on your eyes. I can't help it. I genetically have circles under my eyes. They say it's allergies, whatever. I'm over it, thank God, these days. However, what I realized was that what I was watching, what I was seeing in this notebook was programming, right? Hence the 12 Week Breakthrough Coaching Program. Shannon just said, Lisa, you've helped me so much. I listen to your meditations every every night to help me sleep. I'm so happy. Um, um, so you are understanding 
that you are repro maybe you don't but i just want to shout out to you you're reprogramming your mind my brainwave meditations are recorded in theta and alpha brainwave frequencies and so this helps bring your mind into a much more susceptible state remember you were brainwashed up until about this age of seven because your brain was in a brainwave state right so whatever you experienced was downloaded very very rapidly i'm just trying to help people wake up and become above the veil of consciousness so that they can learn to understand that what's below the veil, um, you don't have to cling to anymore. Let me read this letter that I received. Dear Lisa, Father's Day is upon us, <clears throat> and I am so confused. My father left our family when I was four years old. At the time, he was an active drinker and was having multiple affairs. When I was 13, he got sober and married a woman who has been nothing but cruel to my sister and I from the time we, uh, we were introduced to her. I recently landed a great gig with a movie company. And some of my, uh, and since my, my dad and my stepmom have found out they've been doing what they can to pull me back in. I think <clears throat> they, they just want me to be able to tell, they want to be able to tell others about my career. It doesn't feel gen genuine, but the little girl in me feels like she's struggling because she would so much love to finally be validated. I've been invited for Father's Day at this at his home, but I do not want to go. Can you speak about this? I know you can't tell me what to do, but I appreciate your wisdom and clarity and believe your guidance can help shed some light on what decision I should consider. Namaste. So this is, you know, this came through um, Facebook um, and um, somebody who follows me on Facebook. And please, dear ones, if you want, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. Like I said, I, I create polls that you can become a part of. Um, and so let's talk about this, this, um, see some glow show just said, I dread going to see my dad today. Same thing on mother's day. Um, so Lisa Marie, we should start a support group. Um, we do have a support group. We have a support group on Facebook and Instagram. So, uh, Lisa Marie, just look forward, just, just look in my, look at my links. Um, so what we got, what we have to understand is that in life, our goal is to be non-codependent and to be independent. Right. And so not so non-codependent that we don't give a shit about how other people feel, but just non-codependent enough that we can identify our our experiences from the experiences of another, which include our needs from the needs of another. And then what we have to do is that we have to ultimately pick our needs over the needs of another, um, ex ex with the exception of children. Children have to come first. Um, we have to take care of ourselves, but we have to make sure we're taking care of our children. So on this Father's Day, we have this woman who was abandoned by her father at the age of four, really had no interaction with him until she was 13. So you're talking about abandonment trauma, um, attachment trauma. You're talking about being downloaded up until the age of seven with ideas like it's my fault. I wasn't good enough. What's my daddy doing? Does he have another family? Does he have a daughter? Does, does he love her? Um, more than me, um, and all that stuff. Right. So this is what's going on, to, going on in this woman's life and in, in her mind it happens to all of us because the mind thinks very similarly. So she is now working for a movie company. And since the dad and stepmom found out they're trying to pull her in, well, that's narcissism because it's not about you. It's about them. Right. So that's narcissism. So you got to see that very, very clearly, dear one. Um, and then you, you talk about how the little girl inside of you sees this as an opportunity to be validated. You know, it, this is a little girl issue being validated by her dad. And it's the same thing that men and women do when it comes to sex, right? You didn't think I was going to say that, right? But so oftentimes when we're codependent, we're so alone, we don't feel good enough. What we do is we have sex with people, right? Because it's an opportunity to feel touched and kissed and loved and wanted, right? But it's, it can be very devastating, right? You change, you're having, you're exchanging sexual energy with somebody who might not be, might not have your best interest at heart. Um, so we have to really be careful about our, our loneliness and our need for attention and validation because we can accept money from people that we shouldn't. We could live with people that we shouldn't. We could cut off friendships with other people for the sake of someone else that we shouldn't. So this thing of becoming, you know, uh, independent and interdependent opposed to codependent is very serious stuff, very, very serious stuff. And I cannot um, 
uh, stress it enough. Um, it's, it's Manju's life. I'm joining the Breakthrough Warrior course. Hope, hope you see my comments. Yeah, so the Breakthrough Warrior, that the Breakthrough Warrior program is actually a membership site, and I have a bunch of programs in there. Um, bunch of programs in there that you don't find anywhere else. So if you, that's a monthly course if you're interested in that. Um, but getting back to what I was talking about, um, our goal is to become interdependent and independent, right? So independent, I can have my own voice, my own mind, and follow my own goals. When I'm in a relationship with someone, I need to be interdependent, meaning I have to know where I am and where the other person is, where I end and where the other person ends. So my rule of thumb is you should never love anybody more than you love yourself, right? Uh, everybody knows I love my husband, Anthony. But I can tell you that if my husband, Anthony, turned into someone or be, or was revealed to me that he was not who I thought he was, I would love myself enough to say, uh -uh, ain't going to work. Like, I'm just saying, you know, so and I can love open heartedly because I'm not afraid of the relationship ending. Right. So if you're afraid of something ending, don't go into it. Move forward in life um, when you're not, a, you know that the relationship can end at any time. Because you know why, dear ones? That's the effing truth. Every relationship we have will end because we will either die or we'll get sick or there'll be some accident or the person that we love will die, cheat on us or whatever. But every relationship ends, right? It's an illusion and it's a construct of the ego and the, and the material brain. Um, and the ego to make people think that they're permanent, right? And things should last forever. But when you think that through and you realize, holy shit, everything is going to dissolve. Everything is on the decay. So for me to think this relationship has to last forever and he could never leave me and she should never leave me is a waste of energy. And it's causing you to fear and be in lack, right? Right. It's causing you to be afraid of uh, being yourself, right? So um, just be aware of that, dear ones. So the little girl in her is craving this opportunity to possibly be seen by her father, right? And um, she's asking me my advice. Should she go to see her dad on Father's Day? My immediate response is no. Um, why should you? Because you're only appeasing his narcissism. But I also understand we have to pay attention to what the inner child wants, right? So um, every decision that you make, you have to run it through your head, your psychological mind, your conscious mind. You have to think about the consequences of every action you take. And what I teach my own children is think about the consequences of an action in a word. And if you can live with those consequences, go for it. If you can't, don't do it. So if you can, dear one, speaking to the woman who wrote this letter, if you can say no and you can deal with his bullshit, right, say no. Deal with the consequences of saying no. When you say no to a narcissist, they usually get very angry and they look to hurt you and they lash out and they smear campaign you. If your father gets this idea that um, you will one day validate him, he won't discard you because keeping you in his corner in case you win a Tony award or, a, or a, let's say an Oscar one day, that will serve his narcissism. If he gets the idea that he cannot manipulate you at all, this smear campaign is coming. I just went through something similar. Okay. When this person realized that I was not giving in on my boundary, the smear campaign started. Oh, well, okay. This is what people do when it comes to alcoholics, recovering alcoholics, very juvenile. They lash out like they're 16 year old adolescents, right? They say things that aren't true. So if you understand that dad being, you know, we said that he was an active drinker, I'm assuming he was a, an alcoholic. Um, so if, if you say no to him, you need to expect for him to lash out in a very immature fashion. Um, remember that his narcissism is all about people validating him and making him feel good about him and parents who discard their children and all of a sudden their, their children are very, very successful who are trying to bring their children back into their life. It's not about the child. It's about the father. Look what my child did. You know, she did this, she did that. 
not about the child. It's about the child making the father look good. I choose not to be part of that, you know, dynamic anymore. Um, but my first instinct is to not go. But I also understand that you have to be okay with the consequences. So I would think about that. Think about the consequences of saying yes and the consequences of saying no. If you say yes and you go there and you are disturbed or upset by something you see or how you feel, then know that you can say no. Know that you can walk out. Know that you can say namaste, enjoy the rest of your day. I don't know, my stomach's bothering me, I have to go. Make up some excuse to get the hell out of there. But I think the most important thing is that you need to speak to your inner child from a higher state of awareness. So when I think about this, I think I think about my brain in segments. So I know that I have a neocortex and I imagine my neocortex literally has this divine spirit and this divine spirit can speak to my amygdala, which represents my inner child. Um, so I would spend time from a higher state of awareness speaking to this inner child inside of me that absolutely wants to be validated by her father. And that I'm, I write scripts for people all the time. They say to me, can you give me a script? Can you tell me what I should be thinking on my walk or what I should be thinking when I'm sitting with my mother or what I should be thinking, what are the thoughts I should be thinking? And so um, it sounds something like this. Dear one, of course you want, there's a part of you that wants to be with your father today. Of course you do. This man gave birth to you. He's half your DNA. Of course, this is an opportunity. You see it as an opportunity to finally feel loved by this man that abandoned you so long ago. It is normal to feel this yearning. Every child yearns for a mother and father. Children even yearn for abusive mothers and fathers. They do. That's Stockholm Syndrome. We yearn. It's normal to yearn, to want to be loved and um, validated and appreciated by a mother and father. It's normal. So the first thing you want to do is you want to validate, um, you know, um, your inner child's yearning. But then what you have to do is you have to step in and you have to take care of the inner child and say, however, this idealized version of daddy is not correct. You know, who he is doesn't fit this fantasy. And that's okay because you may have felt rejected by him, but the reality is you were always enough, right? And it's not your fault that he was a drinker and a cheater. It's not your fault. You are enough. You are enough. Um, you are enough. So it's important that, you know, you learn to honor how you feel, validate how you feel, and then step in from a higher state of awareness and help the younger psyche within you see this picture, of what it really, really is. And I can tell you, dear ones, that's the road that I took. You know, there are lots of steps to this, but I can tell you, you know, in a snapshot, in, in, a, in a time frame of 33 minutes, um, it's what I've learned to do. And it's, I'm no longer suffering from panic attacks. I no longer suffering from eating disorders. I see myself very, very clearly. I'm a middle-aged woman. My body doesn't look the way it did 20 years ago. I have cellulite. I have spider veins. You know, um, my face is starting to sag. It's all good. It's all good. You know why? We're, it's happening to everybody. We're all at different stages, right? But I'm so grateful. Today I was telling myself I'm so grateful, you know, that I am who I am and I've got the body I have because it, it houses my spirit, you know, um, you know. Who is this person? Hold on, dear one. I have to delete somebody. I'm learning. Um, I'm learning. So let's see. Hold on one second. We've had, um, yeah, we had this. We had someone trying to um, troll the channel. So I'm learning. So um, I am learning to love myself in spite of the criticism that I had from my parents. I'm learning to love myself in spite of um, what um, the what society infuses us with this idea of what women should look like, right? When every when every makeup model is twelve, you know that we've hit an all-time societal low. You know it. You know it. 
It is ridiculous. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 12 year old, 15 year old models doing face makeup. Come on. You know, be realistic. They're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. Skin is gorgeous. Put put a 60 year old woman on television with no with no airbrushing or whatever. That's what I want to deal with. But anyway, I don't have any of these issues anymore. Um, and so I'm so grateful. And so I just really wanted to go live on Father's Day, give whoever was live. There are 254 people live. Maybe more will watch it for today. But just let you guys know that you're not alone. I just had a decent conversation with my dad, very superficial. We can't go low. And that's fine. Can't go deep. I keep it high. No big deal. Um, so that's awesome. Um, but everybody who is a wounded adult child on Father's Day and Mother's Day, you know, we can actually struggle. And I just want to encourage you to honor yourself. Never love anybody more than you love yourself. And that's not coming from a narcissistic place because, you know, you have to have empathy, but still at the end of the end of the day, the empathy has to be about you. You have to have empathy for yourself first, because if you don't, if you don't take care of yourself, you're worthless to anybody else. You are absolutely worthless. You know, if you have all this empathy in the world for your patients or your clients and, you know, dogs, and I get it, I get it. And all these causes, I get it. If at the end of the day, you have no empathy for the self, you are of no use to anyone else. You are angry, you're irritable, you're tired, you're frustrated, you get depressed, blah, 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 blah. You can't change the world. You can't save the world. You can only save yourself. And when you save yourself, right, when you save yourself, you have the opportunity to help others change. So that is my wish and desire. Uh, so dad approaches said, you're fat. So we're going to um, delete um, this person and we'll get him off our channel. What a sad thing. What a sad thing. What a sad thing. I just want to make sure that um, one second, dear one, hold on one second. Let me see. I have to find him. Data Pro, there's, I just want to address that. Data Pro, you look like you're a gamer. And I just want to say that I, I'm going to pray for you. Seriously, I'm going to lift you up with an intention of love. Because anybody that has to go on someone's live stream that is trying to intentionally um, infuse this planet with love, who has to say something like that, is in a pretty dark place. You know, you're not, you're not vibrating love and light. And that's a shame. Um, but your opinion is, means nothing to me. And um, just saying, dear one, but I wish you well. And I hope one day you get to the point where you find the value in trying to lift people up instead of trying to bring people down. But I have to, I have to assume people have tried to bring you down dear one, because what goes in comes out. So with that being said, I'm going to block you now, dear one. Okay. And um, get you and uh, get you out of here. So data pro is gone. Um, so that's how you deal with people, dear one. Um, so who are uh, being silly, you know? Um, so um, you just accept how people feel, understand it's always a projection, right? Anybody who comes on the channel says, Lisa, you're fat. You know, well, first of all, why would you say that? That's like so silly, so silly, so silly, um, whatever. But what goes in has to come out. So this person, um, you know, unfortunately, in my my gut, this is person who has probably chastised and been criticized and now has to um, spew that, right? Because that's, that's what goes in comes out. So, but I say what we do is we... Um, we lift them up. We lift this person up in love and light. And we hope that um, he or she doesn't have to go through life trolling people's live videos and calling them fat. Poor thing. Poor thing. So dear ones, love yourself. Don't love anybody more than you love yourself. Reserve empathy for yourself. Love yourself. Remember that, you know, you're supposed to do unto others as you have others do unto you. And you're supposed to love others as you love yourself. But what we have to do is we have to understand that all love comes from self-love, right? Um, so I just hope that this live stream has helped anybody who's struggling on Father's Day. I wanted you to know that you're not alone. I think about 
this community and I think about people who follow me on Instagram and Pinterest all the time. You know, um, my husband's heard me say it a million times that um, it's so, so awesome to know that you're not alone. It's so awesome to know that not everybody had an amazing childhood. You know, it's so awesome to know that people are struggling just like you and they have similar thoughts to you. And that speaks to this initial bonding, right? You know, uh, doing live streams like this, you, you know, even, and I don't mean to plug my coaching program. I really don't. I'm just, but it's appropriate right now. <laughs> you know, my coaching program, you get a tribe of people and the bonding that takes place is just really, really incredible. I do launch that program August 2nd. So if anyone's interested, please check out the links below or you can reach out to me at the email that's uh, in the description box. So dear ones, this is it. Um, hopefully I'll figure out how to how to create announcements around the live stream so people just aren't caught off guard. Guard. I believe you have to subscribe. And when you subscribe, you hit the little bell button, right? Um if you go, if, please follow me on Instagram. Like I said, I have a poll that I'm taking, which I think is going to be really beneficial for a lot of people. And I finally figured out how to create a poll. So I'm going to be creating. Namaste and out loud, I bow to the love and the light that is absolutely in you. Until next time. Bye for now.